Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight at the Cade is proud to present Toria Blanchard and Lauren Hood. <laughs> great intro. Nice. Hey Lauren, how's hey, it going? Awesome. I know What's I haven't up? seen you in like <laughs> two good solid weeks. Last Which time I saw time. you, I know you in had your time. hair all pressed. <laughs> your hair was long. I was like, oh la la, she's serious. <laughs> oh, la, la. So I don't like this intro. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> no, but I love your hair. It's cute. I have it like that during the summer. So thanks, girl. Holler. What's up with your varsity sweater? I know, this is my new little thing. I don't know, I, I wanted to start a little gang where everybody, all the girls are wearing varsity sweaters. I just made swim varsity, so <laughs> maybe it'll catch on. I don't know, I like it, so it's hot. I'm hot right now, I can't it's neat. do anything else. Right, what you doing over there? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing all right. Awesome. We're gonna get one of those varsity sweaters. Wait, can I join since I'm? Uh, no, well, only, for, only for good that's girls. Where they're from. <laughs> 64. So, yeah. You want to be a part of my gang? For sure. Yeah. You got a sweater hot, for me? A hot varsity sweater. <laughs> I'm like physically sweating right now. So, there it is. Um, right. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're awful. <laughs> cut. <laughs> cut. Are you allowed cut. to do that? Can you cut yourself? I don't know. They can like splice it up. It's not good for girls to cut themselves. <laughs> like I black swine. I, I about that. <laughs> that was like black swine. It was a metaphor for like cutting yourself <laughs> at anorexia. The movie is not as good the second viewing. <laughs> so it's like kind of terrible. But, right. Uh, so. It made me want to practice being a ballerina though. Exactly. <laughs> I could see that. You had that like ballerina itch. I knew the role would be too much for you. <laughs> well, I, you know, everyone tells me I look great in a tutu. <laughs> With the suit coat on, of course. I'm visualizing Fantastic. it. Fantastic. So you've got a trend also. She's got varsity sweaters. She's got trench coats and tutus. I think, I think we could mix them, though. It'd be a great amalgamation. <laughs> That's a fun gang. Right. <laughs> that could be the name of the gang. <laughs> the great amalgamators. That <laughs> could work, totally. It's an intense it's all lunch. smart and stuff, so. Well. Nice. So what have you been do up to? What have you been obsessing about? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I care to share for the TV world. <laughs> Hola. Um, yeah, I mean, life is pretty boring. I'm old now. I don't know. I haven't been doing You're anything. You're running an working. empire. What's up with your empire? Uh, gosh, I never talk about work when I'm not Listen, at work. you need to talk about the expansion of your empire. Uh, uh, you need to be a role model. For okay, I'm black trying to be a role everywhere. model. We don't have right? any, okay? Okay. We have Oprah and you. <laughs> do it, girl, do it. All right. So good girls. I run a little crepery right by the DIA. It used to be a little 48 a square foot space. Um, now it's a, a big crepery. It's 2,000 square feet. I have a little deli space out in Southfield. And I'm trying to open up a bar next to the DIA called Rodan. I have my last liquor license hearing, so I have to come in there and <laughs> tell them what I'm doing and hopefully get the liquor license put in there in that space. So there it is. Fantastic. And I have also been obsessing over She's magazines. She's got goodies in the door. I can't help it. I, I'm just like ridiculous. <laughs> Leopold's, which is a, a, like a bookstore located right next to the DIA and uh, right next to me. Right next to the Crapery. They have all these amazing magazines. I'm obsessed. I have been buying magazines when <laughs> just spending all my little bit of money on magazines. It's disgusting. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> this is a day's worth of magazines. So when I go to work, I work so I can pay for magazines. <laughs> These magazines are not cheap. I mean, it's just like, this is like a $15 magazine, but it's so good. And everything's so ethereal. They're so pretty. So what's your favorite pictures? Uh, what speaks to you? Uh, Lula, it's like girl of my dreams, and they Lula. take a picture in like Big Sur, and it's so pretty. <laughs> it's like they always talk about the stuff I'm like interested in, and I don't know, it's it's cool stuff. Oh, they got a little Black Swan spread. I wish this whole movie could have been like this. I mean, Black Swan was terrible when you see it like pretty. the second time. It's pretty. It's like cheesy <laughs> when you see it the second time. And I've also, besides varsity sweaters, I've been obsessed with these like Mad Men. Like <laughs> nightgown things. 
I just, they, they must think I'm crazy at the Salvation Army. I just buy them. Do I wear them? No. I just hang them in my closet. Old lady it's so pretty. <laughs> you just don't understand. I don't care. I got like 15 of those. <laughs> right, as you it's should. Your gang members, right? And I wear them. Right, because you're part of a gang. One of us. Yeah, we get beat up all the time. Mm -mm. <laughs> so there it is. I really need a snare fill for that. Right? <laughs> yeah, you do. Hello. So that's what I've been up to. I'm, I'm getting old. I can't hang like I used to, for real. Like, I went to Chicago last, oh gosh, it was last week, and yeah. I stayed in the hotel room. And I went to H&M, because they had the long Look at this bar. Oh, <laughs> it was half off. And this, this stuff was expensive. I got this half off. <laughs> I, you probably think it's ugly. I don't care. I mean, it's long bar. <laughs> it's half off. Do I got you, the girl. Nothing. Do you. Right. And that's all I did. And I stayed in the hotel room. I did paperwork. And then I went to John Hancock up on the 94th floor. <laughs> I oh, went ice view. skating. Yeah, it was like this tiny little rig. And before you go up there, they show you like a picture of it. They're like, you want to go to this ice rig? I'm like, yeah, sure. And I didn't realize it was just like the size of the stage. <laughs> and the ice, tiny. there's no ice. It was like plastic. So you're <laughs> skating on plastic. And it's just such a tourist trap. And that's what I did when I was in Chicago. Fantastic. I remember I read Old it to you. Trip. Right. I read it to you when I was in Chicago really a few years that? ago. <laughs> <laughs> Stand out until four in the morning. Night the at the all night. The we'll continental. Hey. Yeah, hey. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Where are we hanging out now? What are we doing now? Um, like you said, old lady style. <laughs> that's what we I need to open up a bar where mature old people can go and right, act right. right. The old lady right. bar. Yeah, oh, oh. I feel like I'm too old for hot to death. Are we Can too I get old a for Manhattan? <laughs> um, no, they play great music. They do play great music. Let's do a stream of plugs. Film. John and Ash, who else yes. would you like to plug? Oh gosh, hey, I plug Leopold. Death. You did. Oh my gosh, the Burton Theater. That's where you go to Crete. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we can try goes on at the Burton. Crete goes on. I got well at home. I should even. <laughs> People go there to creep. Well, it's not creeping if we talk about it. Keep it on the DL. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know what I can tell you another room. creeping thought. Mr. Mike's on Woodward. Ah! OMG, I just went there for the first time I last know, week. that's pretty, Are you it's pretty awesome. Me? They have like karaoke and But it's real karaoke. Don't, don't come with your uh your funny game. No, they, they will don't not be come... impressed with your rendition of Don't Stop Believing. Those no. are some serious people looking for record deals. Yeah. They're not playing around. They want to hear like Miss Chalet. Yeah. They yeah. want to hear like some yeah. old Tony They Rackers do some Barry White. I, it was on yeah. and I thought it was a record. I was like, that's karaoke. You know, that's what I like to do. I like to do karaoke. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> I love doing karaoke. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm <laughs> But she says it the it. real way though. I had a friend that lived karaoke. in Japan and he would always correct me. Karaoke. <laughs> be like, oh, we're going to do karaoke tonight. Karaoke. Yeah, and I, I like, like doing like, that too. Karaoke. <laughs> That's like my dream vacation. To Is this some karaoke? Karaoke. Karaoke. To go to yeah. Japan and put on the pink wig and sit next to my day <laughs> like like how Charlotte Johansson did in Lost in Translation, y'all. And to you laugh know. with their hands over your mouth. <laughs> exactly. Oh, see, that you'd be a racial. You'd be a racial. I can be racist. I'm a minority. Hey. <laughs> a double minority. Yeah. Woman. Haven't I dealt with enough? Can I laugh at things? <laughs> yeah. Right. I can't. I can't answer that question. <laughs> you better not. You know what? We should. You know what we should have. It did? is not your time, Lauren. Damn it! We should have had people call in, and we could give people advice. That's See, we're that's good at the that. Show. That's the show. That's That'll the be show. next time for real. I'll give you my my cell phone number. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Everybody calls my cell phone number. Anyways, it's like. They think it's for good girls, but it's really my cell phone number. I'm like, I cut answer the phone at four o'clock. Good, good morning, good girls. Good afternoon, good girls. And it's like my personal cell phone number. If I don't, if your name doesn't pop up, so there it is. So I could just give out my number right now. I got my phone number underneath you. Yeah. Oh, it's running right now. So everybody has it. Call me now. Call me now. Fantastic. Right. What up? Well, we have a great show tonight. Woo! Woo! Who do we got on tonight? We have. Uh, Gary Schwartz, Woo. animator. He's the reanimator, right? The reanimator. Yeah. Yes. I've heard of If you guy. look at like movies or whatever, you can you scroll through the credits, you can see it's Gary Schwartz doing animation. Or whatever. Fantastic. I did that once for The Running Man. I actually did that. I actually looked at that. Nice. Yeah. Who else? And we have Karen Gates. Nice. Woo! 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 And who's our musical guest? And then uh, Shifi. 
McFly. Seafy McFly. Fresher than a brand new pair of white socks. Uh, He's a storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> That's a line from the play. He's a storyteller. Oh. All right, after this break, we'll have our first interview. The Boggs Center helps grassroots activists develop themselves into visionary leaders and critical thinkers who can devise proactive strategies for rebuilding and respiriting our cities and rural communities from the ground up. These new leaders will demonstrate the power of ideas in changing ourselves, our reality, and demystifying leadership. Tonight, we welcome Karen Gates from the ARC Association. So Karen, thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for giving me the invitation Absolutely. to join you up here on stage. Yeah, it yeah. turns out we're from like the same, kind of the same neighborhood. Yeah, a little, uh, I know. Alternative school. <laughs> right. Yeah, we were having that discussion about Redford and Henry Ford. <laughs> Redford and yeah, Henry, and Henry Ford. Ford. Uh, fair enough. But yeah, where's DPS thinking they're going? <clears throat> Ooh, put those two together. <clears throat> And not expect violence? Whoa, we won't go there. Yeah. A whole nother show. Unfortunately, I think. Yeah, a whole nother show. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad they're both closed now. What are you going to do? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, anyways, yeah, thank you so much for being here. And and tell us about ARC. The ARC. You're, yeah, the, the ARC you're Association. I always get asked, oh, what's the ARC stand for? And I'm like, the ARC? Um, it really <sighs> stood for uh, the ARC of the Covenant is where it developed out of because mm -hmm. we want to work with people in covenant with them to help change their lives. But now we have an acronym. Somebody handed it to us and it fits perfect. It's called Acts of Random Kindness. And um, that's exactly, totally what we're doing at this time. Um, we were founded in 2000. David Kalita and I co-founded the organization because we found a real difficulty in actually obtaining assistance in transforming our lives. Both of us were in the recovery movement. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been clean and sober since September of 1988. Way grateful wow. for that. Way grateful. That's excellent. Good yeah. Job. Yeah. Or I wouldn't be here with you today for sure. All right. There'd probably be a headstone someplace with my name on it, you know. And so having been there and been out on the streets and things and trying to find the help, everybody goes, oh, there's help here. And you go and you knock on the door and... Mm -hmm. They go, oh yeah, you've got this, 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 oh, but you don't have this. Oh, but you don't fit here. Right. A lot of people get bumped out of getting assistance because of their income level being, I mean, this is ridiculous, but I've heard your income level being 10 cents over the amount and you don't get food stamps. Right. You know, I mean, come on, how much? Oh, okay, because I make 10 cents too much, I'm gonna be able to afford that milk and cheese and burger and everything to live. Right. I mean. It's just, uh, it's kind of very insane. Well, how does one, you know, get active with the ARC and volunteer with the ARC if someone is interested? If that? someone's interested, um, our phone number is 313-892-4746, or you can just go thearcassociation.org, mm -hmm. and you'll come to our website, and it has all the information. It talks about um, not only the outreach. We've been doing an outreach to the homeless in Roosevelt Park, okay. right in front of that. Yeah. Train station, <laughs> most and photographed building in Detroit, right. and we're out there every Saturday at 2 o'clock. If you want to volunteer, if you just show up at 145, we take new volunteers and kind of orientate them a little bit while the people that have been coming out set up. So we welcome anybody, any age, um, their challenges, all of it, because that's the people on the volunteer side actually have a whole lot of empathy because a lot of us mm -hmm. um, that founded the organization were recovering addicts and alcoholics and many of us stood in those lines uh, to get food have slept out you know outside in our cars and shelters right. or literally out on the streets so how would one get assistance if they needed it they needed you know the arcs help and getting their lives together 
call right. us right. Um, or just show up at the park. Okay. You know, if anybody comes out at the park at 2 o'clock is when we start serving. Mm -hmm. And I'm always handing my cards out and telling people I see on street corners. Okay. Um, the, the big thing that I really want to put out there today is, um, you know, there's, there's a great stereotype out with homeless. Right. And you hear it all the time. People go, oh, they're either lazy or they're crazy. You know, I mean, it's, it's just like, okay, wait a minute. It's not true. You try standing out on a street corner with a sign collecting quarters and see if that's not an enterprising full-time job. You know, um, and people who have mental illness are not the majority of homelessness, especially today. It's a crime. 2009 are the latest statistics. We all know what's happened economically in the last couple right. of years. Woo! 2009 isn't going to cut it. And the assistants, a lot of places, uh, hand out resource referrals. We had one guy got his job broken in four places, got it wired shut. And um, when he got out of, oh, can I say their name? When he got out of uh, mm, one of the local out. hospitals, called out, <clears throat> um, they handed him a bunch of resource referrals. The first sheet, you guys, looked like it was typed on a typewriter in 1950s and was slid over on the one side. Tragic. The Roosevelt Hotel was listed as a shelter for men. Does anybody remember when the Roosevelt Hotel closed? Long I don't think in my, our lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> right. Long time ago. So the art assists people in need and just... Getting hooked up to the right places. Absolutely. That's our vision. That's fantastic. A 24-7 center. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you for you. all the good work that you do, and I appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot thank for you. the opportunity. Thank you. The ARC Association is dedicated to developing programs that assist people with physical, mental, financial, and addictive challenges in becoming more productive members of society through direct assistance, advocacy, referrals, and public awareness. Tonight at the Cade, we welcome animator Gary Schwartz. Do you like my house? <laughs> it's really cold. There's, there's, there's no glass on the windows, and it's really cold tonight. He made that for it's us right snowy. before he came out. This is an illusion, fourth dimension. Uh, it yes. seems like I run into you everywhere around Detroit in the most I random am. spots. We, my wife and I, we are everywhere here. You know, we're not from here. We moved here seven years ago. That accent. Oh, from somewhere it? else. Mm. Yeah. I do have that accent. <laughs> you do. Alaska. You remind me of... I'm guessing another but, You dimension. know, people from, from <laughs> Michigan, it, the accent is like sawing with a knife. Real yeah. nasally and... What does our accent sound like? What are you trying like? to say? <laughs> it sounds like a drawn out, nasally kind of... <sighs> Fords. Yeah, it just... Myers. Kind of Myers. You put plurals on everything. Yeah, it's like that, you know. Yeah. But it's all an illusion. Fair enough. So... Anders. <laughs> so what's been up? What are you up to? Oh, I've, I actually just got out of that, uh, that Kresge hole. Oh, I've gosh. been in that for the past dun, month. Dun, uh, the Kresge Q. <laughs> All right. But oh, my gosh, Lauren. Do you remember, like, last year, every... <laughs> remember that her mother was applying for the Kresge Oh, yeah. Everyone. Every, a lot of people Everyone's applying for the Kresge. Yeah. But once filled it out, I feel like this heavy weight just lifted. And, right. Oh, it's... There's five inches of snow. Look at that. <laughs> We're all trapped. What a world. The so world's still spinning. So all again. this time. Now it's nail biting time. Until when? Until when? Yeah, when is the, the big. Until, so I, I bite my nails till June to find out whether I have any worth or meaning in this town. Oh, c'est pas vrai. No, is that true? Come on. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> so, have you been teaching? Have you been animating? Interesting you should say that. Yes. Ask that question. Um, 
Three days ago, I taught at the University of Michigan. Awesome. I mm -hmm. taught, uh, I actually assisted Toby Millman with her Camera Obscura class. Okay. We took one of the classrooms and I turned the entire room into a Camera Obscura. And you define Camera Obscura for little... us not art educated okay. people. For un, un, camera obscura. uneducated <laughs> art people, <laughs> dyslexia. The word <laughs> Camera Obscura means dark room, Latin for dark room. Any camera, like the cameras oh. on the set here, they're nothing more than lenses and dark rooms. Laura, you, we did this in middle school. We took the little shoe box, you do a little hole. Oh, the little put a little pinhole in it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I simply we didn't refer to it as camera obscura. Like, but we but simply okay. scaled it up. Okay. We made it the size of a classroom. I had one of the students cut out a hole out of a sheet of aluminum foil, tape it onto the window, then black out everything else with cardboard, and we just waited a few minutes for the image to appear. It was outdoors, that was indoors, upside down, and it was, it was magic. <laughs> That's our job. We're animators, we're magicians. So tell us about some of your past projects. You've worked on everything. How far back am I, are we going? Oh, let's go, let's go way back. Okay, way back. I was born. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll go. Da, da, da. We'll, okay, we'll, we'll move a bit forward. In nine, okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go right to a high point. High point. I know it's, that's not good story, Tom, but I'll go right to a high point. 1982, I was nominated for an Academy Award. Hola. Okay. A real In Oscar uh, the nom. short animated category for a short film called Animus, and it is still playing in various museums. Excellent. It is still playing around. Then um, graduated from CalArts. I became a director in Hollywood for 10 years, worked for PBS, Sesame Street, all the usual suspects in yeah, Hollywood. Hopefully PBS doesn't go Public away. Public broadcasting yeah. system. Hello. Yes. Some interesting things Channel going 56. on. I was a director at Klasky Chupo. That was the studio where for the first three seasons, that's where the Simpsons began. Oh, Even cool. before that, it was on the Tracy Ullman show. Did that mm. for 10 years, burned out. Because that, that's a uh, uh, cue. <laughs> you know that <laughs> then I morphed, that's an animation term, I morphed from animation director to animation educator. Mm. So I was teaching other idiots to do what I did. Oh, Zimbabwe, oh la la. <laughs> Why do they have to be idiots, Gary? Damn it. Because so if they're going to follow me and do what I did, they're idiots. Oh, fair enough. I know, I used to be a teacher as well. God bless them. I don't know. Yeah, God bless us for doing it. So I started, uh, I got a three-year grant from the California Arts Council, and while I got that grant, I was still a director at Klasky Chupo. I got a, I got a Sesame Street. Now, unlike most people at Sesame Street, they might give them a phrase, a number, a letter. Not me. I got the whole alphabet, all 26 letters. What? A through Z. And Did if you create you, a font? <laughs> I did more than that. If you remember, well, if any of you watch Sesame Street in the last 20 years, they cycle through all of them. And I did the one, Alphabet Jungle. Cool. Alphabet Jungle. Follow me from A to Z. A is swinging like an ape. Biggest big bed roar. See, so we buy that crocodile. Remix, Wait, there's a whole lot more. D takes right. a dive, cut. I could just go on with the letters. It just goes on and on. <laughs> so that still, that's still, that still plays. Well, uh, we're all going to keep our fingers crossed for Gary. The Kresge, come on. Come on. <laughs> all righty. Could happen. Could happen. Then I was minding my own business, and I get a phone call. Hello. <laughs> Yes? Um, Gary, that, that phone city? doesn't work. What's, uh, Detroit? Where's that? <laughs> um, how much? <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'll be there. Yay. So, after 24 years in Los Angeles, I just pulled up stakes and moved to Detroit. Mm-hmm. And we're, and we're glad that you came here. You and I was a professor at an art school, actually just down the street over there, which will yeah. remain nameless. <laughs> obvious reason. And then uh, at some point, about six years later, I <clears throat> transitioned. Transitioned. <laughs>
And well, now I'm in the position I'm in now. We keeping our fingers crossed for the Kresge. Yay! Uh, <laughs> Serious, seriously, a couple things I want to say. One is um, the quality of our lives grew exponentially moving here to mm -hmm. Detroit, Michigan from Los Angeles, California. Exponentially. And people say, how is that, po how is that possible? Because very simple. It's the, LA is very, very crowded, very polluted, very competitive. I lived in a small apartment, the same apartment in the Fairfax for 16 years. It was just, mm -hmm. And the idea of buying a house was just beyond it was just beyond imagination. Here, it's just beyond selling it once mm -hmm. you have it. Right. But that's, an, that's another story. But the quality of our lives did go up. We would not move from here. Yeah. We love this place. Yeah, it's awesome here. Thank you so much for Thank you. Cargo. Thank you. Thank you. Good Girls Go to Paris Crepes is located in Detroit on 15 East Kirby, Suite 115, facing Woodward Avenue in the Park Shelton Building. All 50 varieties of crepes are cooked to order using a traditional crepe rig on the single cast iron crepe griddle. Alrighty, I'd like to give a big welcome to Shifi McFly. Woo, Shifi! Walk it out. Hug it up, hug it up, hug it up, hug it up. <laughs> All right. No, this is your seat. Go sit next to me. Hey, what's up? All right. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah. What you got in there? Let me see some tattoos. Word. Right there. <laughs> in your chest. Yeah, uh, rest in peace, reality. Right. Oh, um, shit. Sure. A T. For tour. Like, imitates art. Okay. Like, my mm. name is Tashi. Okay. Uh, I got a heart with a microphone and a pencil through it. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, be the bravest, longer arts, light is short. I mean, life is short, but art is forever in Latin. That's mm. cool. And, um, I got a spider over there, but I don't feel like getting naked. Yeah. <laughs> you're naked. <laughs> Lauren, show that's your barbed wire arm touch. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be convenient in this top. <laughs> 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 So where does the name Sheefy come from? Sheefy McFly. Um, my friends call me Sheef. Mm -hmm. And Chief or Sheef? Both. <laughs> Do I have to use the mic? Can I just talk regular like that? You gotta use the mic. Okay, I will use the <laughs> mic. <laughs> That's all right. You're comfortable. But no, uh, you know, my friends call me Sheef. Um, and then I don't know. I just like McFly, and then Sheefy. For my yeah. density, right? Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, you know, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been rapping and performing? Uh, I, I actually went to CCS for two years. I nice. went there for um, illustration as well as fine arts. And then I got broke. So right. I dropped out of college. CCS. That happens at CCS, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know somebody went to CCS and like a truck driver now. So. Dang. Dang. But it's a great school, not to, you know. You know. Uh, but yeah, so you know, I went to CCS and um, I was always doing music while you know I was in school, mm -hmm. so I just went full force with it and um, just did it by myself, you know, uh, and just shit started happening. <laughs> so, do you produce your own stuff and do you write? Obviously, you write your own lyrics and. Yeah, like I started off producing it like. Most of my own stuff, producing and recording and, you know, burning CDs and passing them out, yada, yada. And then it went from there, you know, to actually get a connects, like, you know, just with my homies, band members. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, so where can people see you perform on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a monthly hip hop show called The Air Up There at Bob's Classic Kicks uh, every last Saturday of the month. We pull in a lot of, you know, um, dope underground Detroit rappers as well as underground rappers from Milwaukee, Chicago. Um, we had Pac Dead from California. Um, I don't know if anybody heard of him, probably not. But, uh, well, but not in this audience. <laughs> but, um, well, you don't know? No, yeah, anybody heard of Pac Dead? Yep. 
So you're at Bob's, and could you tell everybody where Bob's is located, just in case? Oh yeah, you know. Bob's is at 4717 Woodward, uh, okay. right by the Church's Chicken, a mobile gas station. I also have another monthly show, um, dope ass show, at 5E Gallery. Uh, Five Elements. Yes, yes. Located on Word. Michigan Avenue. Those yeah. guys. And it's a different feel than um, Bob's. Bob's is more of, you know, the air up there. It's more of a hip-hop show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a dope-ass show. We're trying to make it, like, you know, more genre-less, just, you know, just more revolving around music, just, you know. Awesome. So you're going to be performing a few songs here? Talk about yeah, your play. You know, a few. Talk oh, yeah. Play. You know, I'm in a uh, play called Flow uh, at the Bonsdale Theater. It's um, well, being put together by well, Wayne State, uh, it was originally written by Will Power. Um, he did the show on Broadway for a couple of years. And it was originally a one-man show. And now uh, the director, um, Akua Dogo, she, she's in Korea now, actually teaching a class. Uh -huh. But when she was here, um, she broke it up into an eight-piece ensemble. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I'm not an actor or whatnot. She just saw me rap and was like, hey, you know, you're good. You know, All get right. in this play. So what are you going to be performing at for us tonight? All right. I got this one song. Uh, it's called Ill Little Me off my uh, my beat tape, Munchies. Um, it's called Munchies. I just picked my favorite munchie foods and okay. named them after beats and just, like, uh, put, like, three other just songs, random songs I recorded. And um, another song is called Eating Sushi Slapping Holes. Eating right. Sushi. Uh -oh. Lauren, we have to put our glove on. <laughs> put, put our whole slapping gloves on. Okay. All right. Okay. Don't want to leave no prints. <laughs> That's right. Oh. Fair enough. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming by. and Let's get to slapping holes. All right. Let's All right. do it. Hold on, hold on. Before you get started, you know, I always got to do this. Uh, when I say smoking weed, y'all say smoking weed, smoking weed, smoking weed, smoking weed, smoking weed. When I say eating sushi, y'all say slapping hoes, eating sushi, slapping hoes. All right, let's get this shit cracking. <laughs> Since 1988, Motor City Blightbusters has been a positive catalyst in Detroit to neighborhoods, families, and volunteers by tearing down blighted abandoned homes, cleaning up dump sites, painting existing houses, cleaning up neighborhoods, building new houses, founding Angels Night, and many other positive actions. Yeah, what up though, this Sheaf, you know, we about to get hype in this motherfucker in the K, yeah, live at the K, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I need the audience up here. If you fuck with this song, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. yeah, let's do this, let's do this. Smoking weed, smoking weed, smoking weed, eating sushi, smoking weed, smoking weed, smoking weed, eating sushi, smoking weed, smoking weed, bitch, I'm smoking weed, eating sushi, smoking weed, smoking weed, bitch, I'm smoking weed. California roll, California kush, drinking sake, bitch, hot sake, bitch. We be getting cheapy, hitting up wasabi, bitch. Hindu kush hit your chest like a fucking karate kick. Homie, I kicks it like um bot. Give me a few years, I had a game on lock, but I ain't just talking about rapping and shit. I'm a rock star, whole air clapping and shit. Yeah. Hydro and spicy tuna. Groupie hoes wanna blow a nigga like a tuba. Fried off the fucking Afghan, Tamagoyaki, same color as Pac-Man. My bud greener than wasabi, nigga. Rolling blunts and paper planes, stone the origami, nigga. I'm the man round here, you're a lame I'm from the D, of them fucking Vagos. Smoking weed, smoking weed, smoking weed. Eating sushi, smoking weed, smoking weed, smoking weed. Eating sushi, smoking weed. Smoking way, bitch, I'm smoking way. Eating sushi, smoking way, smoking way, smoking way. My flow crack, nigga, free bass. You niggas sweeter than tempura cheesecake. 
Why you niggas eating cheesesteaks? I got sushi and sashimi on three plates. Silver haze and shrimp tempura. Rolling up a blunt longer than a fucking ruler. I'm that dude, man. There's no one cooler. Diesel, same color. Rest some turtles crawling out the sewer. Eating with chopsticks. Fuck a fork, nigga. I'm a real nigga. You're a dork, nigga. I hate the pigs, man. Fuck pork, nigga. Catch me eating sushi in my hood on the porch, nigga. Niggas hating, man, I fucking love it. Now I can start smacking pussy boys in fucking public. But I ain't gonna do that. I'ma let them hang. I'ma take their girlfriends on motherfucking sushi day. Smoking weed. 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 Thanks everyone for coming out tonight. Tonight at the Cade. Oh. Uh, sh one though, sorry. Uh. <laughs>